Back on Christmas Eve, we looked at a video from Paul Russell. He was going to take his telescope to the beach to try and see if the Earth was flat. In my opinion, we gave him a pretty comprehensive reply to that video. But Paul is not happy with it and he decided to respond. This is golden. Here we go. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Right then, let's crack on with today's video then, which comes from Paul Russell. Looks like he wants to ask me some questions. We start as Paul begins to play my Christmas Eve video. Here we go. Let me tell you this, Paul is now on the fence when it comes to Flat Earth, which doesn't surprise me at all. Let's see why, shall we? Once you have a ton of books in front of you, you'll start to get a more accurate picture of what I'm actually saying. We're going down to the beach in the next hour or so. Well, I'm going to take my telescope with me. Because of the flat earth thing, I just want to have a look. I always thought it was round. I had no reason to believe otherwise, right? But all the talk lately, it really has got me asking questions. Now, Paul, you always thought the earth was round because that's what centuries of measurements, navigation, physics and engineering point out. None of that has changed. The only thing that's changed for you is the exposure to a lot of confident sounding doubt online. I think that's fair enough, don't you? Paul has seen stuff online and that has him doubting things. That is what's changed, not the shape of the planet. Dear Simon Dan, how old are you? How old are you, Simon Dan? 43, but I'm not sure how that's relevant. What experience have you had? Experience with the world, with people, with the way people are manipulated. What experience have you had? How, where have you traveled to? Uh, the US, the Caribbean a couple of times, Greece, Italy, Spain, Sweden, France, Australia, Japan, Ireland, Germany, Denmark, and a sprinkling of islands. I think that's about it. I've been to every single continent, apart from Antarctica. I've been to 37 countries. I'm 61 years old. Good for you, Paul. Still not sure why that's relevant, though. I have been on more aeroplanes than you have had hot dinners, OK? Listen, I know that's a common saying here in the UK, but usually when you say it, the numbers should be at least close. Assuming I've had at least one hot dinner every day of my life, that's over 15,000 hot dinners. You've not been on more planes than that. I have always thought the planet was round. I did not have any reason to think otherwise. It has been in the last, but since I've been doing, since I've been kicking science's ass all over the place because of the lies, okay, I've started to ask myself questions. I've come across some very, very intelligent people and they say, Earth is flat. Earth, I'm like, Ah, I see your problem then. They probably weren't intelligent. At least not in the scientific sense, Paul. Initially, five years ago, I was like, what are you talking about? Dude. But, okay, over and over and over. And, well, you know how it is now. I'd never heard of it five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. But I have seen enough things online, right? The telescope thing, people seeing across 60 mile lakes, pilots that are saying, no, we, we don't program for a, a drop. We fly straight. Hang on, Simon. All of these things. And that sort of proves my point that you've been influenced by what's changed online, hasn't it? It does. It has put enough doubt in my mind. I am objective enough to know. You just said centuries of studies, centuries of scientists, this and that. What have you personally done to check to see if planet Earth is round or flat? So, a proper question. What have you done yourself, physically done? Oh, I don't know. How about a worldwide community Eratosthenes experiment with over 1,000 people taking part? And that conclusively proved that the Earth is spherical. Link for that video is in the description, Paul. Is that enough for you? I get the impression, mate, that you don't. 
you just take everything for granted. And I think the COVID vaccine is, is a demonstration of how science should not be taken for granted. And those making claims about things should not just be listened to and not questioned. Oh dear, now I can see where that mindset comes from. The sun, there is no light delay, right? During a solar eclipse, you can paint it as many colors as you want, I'm at now. There is no light delay. The sun's light is absolute. Not no speed, but incomprehensible speed. Out of the ballpark speed. Hang on, the speed of light is that sort of speed. And you cannot say in one breath that the sun's light is absolute and then in the next say that it still has a speed. You're contradicting yourself here, Paul. The flat earth, you are sat there and you keep saying centuries of studies and scientists have done it. People lie, sight man down. This is why I asked you at the beginning, your life experiences you are going to find out that they didn't go to the moon because it's ridiculous. Well, if Paul from the UK, who thinks the sun's light is absolute, didn't think we went to the moon because it's ridiculous, then I guess we didn't go, hey guys? Does he hear himself? Those people who think that there was six successful moon landings in between 1969 and 1972, why would people think that? Why would people think that there were six? Six of them, right? In three years. Because there were. Two launches a year doesn't seem too far-fetched, does it? I think that's pretty conservative given we know how much SpaceX launches. Do you really? Believe it? You honestly believe that somehow between 1969 and 1972, six, we can call it seven with Apollo 10, they went up to take the picks. And Apollo 13, well, that was a victory of all victories. We should call it eight. They orbited the moon and came back home for crying out loud. You cannot see, that's eight, eight launches between 1969, that's 10, 11, 12, 13, got the asterisk on that because that was a good movie, 40, 50, 16, 17 Apollos. That is eight Apollos. I don't see a problem with that. Am I being silly here? Orbited the moon, took off from planet Earth and orbited the moon in between 1969 and 1972. Eight, that's three, yeah, they all, they all made it, that's 24 people, right? Three in each, three times eight, 24. You're good there, I think. You honestly don't look around now, Artemis, Elon Musk's rockets, you don't for a second go, Hang on a minute, 1960, how the? Why wouldn't you? I'll tell you why. It's a common sense thing. Ah, common sense. Sorry, sorry, Paul. I was just using scientific knowledge of maths and physics, engineering, orbital mechanics, rocketry, and awkwardly, reality. Silly me. Look, we're gonna come back and look at some more of this because Paul has a lot more to say. But for now, we're gonna wrap this video up for another one. Please do let me know in the comments below what you thought of this one from Paul. As I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today as ever. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. I've been Simon and Dan, have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for a Tim Ford Tuesday where Charlie Duke and Bart Sobral go head to head again for the fifth time. See you then.